Fortnite pros like Mongrel, Tifu, and Dubs are, well, pros because of their godlike aim, their quick and smart builds, and their smart plays. But is that all that sets them apart from the rest of us? Most competitive players also have an advantage over casual gamers because of their advanced settings, the sensitivity, the colors, the keybinds. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Keith Allen Henson, and for this video, we've compiled the most advanced settings used by pros in the Fortnite scene, and we're bringing them straight to you. Unlock your true potential with these little known game settings. And thanks to Instapro, you can talk directly with a professional Fortnite player on Pro Guides about other optimal in-game settings. Find out how you can play a match with a top player by checking out ProGuides.com. All right, yo, let's check out the top five most advanced pro settings and how you can use them in your own arena matches. First and foremost, let's check out the colorblind option. Mongrel was the first player to be seen using this setting, bringing it to the Fortnite community's attention. Nowadays, both colorblind variants, Tritonope and Deuteranope, give a significant advantage. It's crucial if you play competitively and even in pub games. It's a night and day difference. That's because the other players appear to be more visible, making it easier to track them in the storm. I'm sure you've seen Fortnite streamers like Tifu fighting off players in the storm, taking those fights you wouldn't normally take, shooting into the storm and easily hitting every shot. You might have wondered, how does he attract them so effectively? Well, now you know. This is the power of colorblind settings. With a colorblind strength above five for either Deuteranope or Tritonope, the storm haze will dampen. This simply makes it easier to see into the storm. Players such as Mongrel have opted into using Deuteranope 9. Tifu, Dubs, and other top players use Tritonope Strength 10 since the game doesn't look as bad. Having greater than 5 actually may seem better, but note that the higher you set it, the duller the colors will become. Who wants to play with full storm vision yet everything else looks black and white? Certainly not me. If you're trying to qualify for the World Cup, okay, these colorblind settings are a necessity. That's because in competitive Fortnite, the games last until the last storm shrinks. Without a colorblind mode on, you're at a considerable disadvantage. All right, let's check out some pro settings when it comes to your heads up display. The HUD scale is often overlooked by players who don't explore the game settings tab too often. So don't feel bad if you aren't familiar with the best settings here. We'll explain it to you here and look at some settings used by popular players. So you're gonna want your HUD scale set to anything lower than 80. That's because once it's above 80, your timer, map, weapons, and building hotkeys may become a distraction. They'll be taking up a large portion of the screen, possibly even obscuring your view during crucial moments. Top pros use lower HUD scales, and you should too. Players such as Mongrel use 0.62. I use 0.65, but it's all personal preference. But we definitely suggest changing it so you won't have those pesky large icons all around you. So, while we're in the Game Settings tab, let's activate the Auto Sort Consumables option and the Auto Pickup option. Sometimes you might be in situations where you don't have the time to set up your inventory properly. Most players use the first three inventory slots as their offensive and the latter two as defensive. By switching on Auto Sort Consumables, when you pick something up, it'll automatically shift the items to the right two slots, making it very simple and quick to sort out your inventory. The Auto Pickup option will help you with all those troublesome landings. I'm sure all you guys have been in that situation where you scuffed a landing and the enemy ends up getting the weapon. This setting allows you to avoid these kind of annoying situations, since the .1 MS ping will help you nab that weapon easy. Coming in at number 3, we have visual sound effects. This can be found in the Accessibilities tab. A couple of patches back, Epic changed the way the visuals work. Previously, if you would turn it on, your in-game sound would be muted. This option was initially intended for people who had trouble hearing or just didn't have a headset, but now it has a multi-purpose use. Visual sound effects relay a small icon that flashes in the direction of the action. For example, when somebody is hitting or shooting a wall, you will get a little red indicator in the middle of your screen, showing you the direction of the motion. It highlights visuals such as footsteps, ballers, and even shots in the direction of the disturbance, one chief advantage I see with this is landing in massive places such as Neil Tilted and Mega Mall. Often, it's hard to make out where the enemy is. However, with this option enabled, finding players becomes a piece of cake. This has happened to me so many times. I was too focused on what I was doing <laughs> and I didn't hear someone approaching. But the footstep indicator popped up, completely saving me. In newer locations like Neil Tilted, locating chests can be a bit challenging as well. This option makes it a no biggie since visual sound effects also points out their location. On the downside, visual sound effects sadly won't help you with vertical audio. 
Epic's vertical audio has been disastrous. Locating players above and below you can be very difficult. I don't know if Epic intends to fix it anytime soon. Let me give you guys something to consider before using this setting. In the in-game zones in Arena or the World Cup, things are extremely chaotic. With so much going on, having a bunch of indicators flashing in all directions could mess you up badly. It also causes your FPS to drop quite a bit. And in the late game zones, even the best PCs hover around 80 FPS. Losing 50 frames for a small indicator advantage doesn't seem worth it. So in a nutshell, it appears to be useful solely for casual play. If you're really outstanding and fast, you could use it until late game and then turn it off. Let us know how that one worked for you. If that last tip didn't cut it for you, then maybe this one will. One that apparently every top player uses. It's called the scroll wheel edit trick. The goal of this method is that instead of scrambling to reset your bills the default way, you can have a quicker method to reset them. This trick is not new and has been around for quite some time, but I noticed many people are still not using it. Trust me when I say it is definitely worth the few days it takes to get used to it. The simple way to do this is by changing the secondary key for the reset edit key to either mouse wheel up or down, depending on what you're comfortable with. Then go to your edit keybind and change the secondary key to the same one as the reset scroll edit keybind. This will allow you to reset your buildings by scrolling up or down twice or just one time really hard. This is hugely beneficial and will help you tremendously, particularly in scenarios when you need it the most like in-game tunneling. I use it all the time and it has saved me way too many times to count. When watching Tifu and other top players reset edits, they seem to be doing it so fast it almost looks like a blur. The difference between the default way and this one is huge. The scroll wheel reset allows you to edit so quick you can block incoming damage with ease, without thinking. There are so many ways you can use this to outplay your opponents. One obvious way is editing on your opponent, then getting a shot off and resetting the edit quickly enough to prevent incoming damage. Our next setting will allow you to solve one of the recent bugs. One notable bug is the miss pickup bug. More often than not, the item you try to pick up won't be in your inventory. This is pretty awful. But the good news is that there's a simple way around it. Remember how we discussed changing your scroll wheel edit button to either mouse wheel up or down? Whichever key you're using, set the use interact key as the exact opposite. If you use scroll wheel up for your reset edit, change the use interact key to scroll wheel down or vice versa. Then go into your settings and find tap to search interact and set it on. This will make it super easy to pick up items on the fly and you won't get stuck not picking something up. Thanks, Epic. I'll stress again, make sure you have tap to search interact key enabled or this trick won't work. This fourth setting, like the previous one, has to do with editing. Raider, an absolute beast at editing, releases secrets on how he edits at such blazing fast speeds. He even makes players such as Mongrel look slow. Here's a clip to prove my point. As you can see, this man's like a machine gun at editing. Luckily, Raider let us in on his secret. <laughs> he uses two different edit keys, like with the scroll wheel reset. He has the primary key edit bound to whatever key he uses. And his secondary bind is a mouse button, so in theory, instead of having to select the editing key twice when he wants to edit, he only clicks each button once. If you test this out, you'll see that you can click them so faster than before. I love the idea and I thought it'd be perfect for regular gameplay, but in practice, I ran into a few problems. The sheer amount of time and the muscle memory required for you to become used to it may actually be longer than you expect. All of us have been using the same key from the start, so I don't think it's worth it for the average player trying to qualify for the World Cup. You won't get used to it overnight, but for people like Raider who perform phenomenally, it's more than worth it. One other problem that can occur is that most people's mouse software doesn't offer a free mouse button. So for 99% of people who use both mouse buttons for building, it's not optimal. That last neat trick is called multi-thread rendering. After patch v9.01, a new feature called multi-threaded optimization has taken the pro Fortnite scene by storm. Like it's insane. Before this, players were trying out many new ways to boost frame rates, and it wasn't going so well. This has completely changed that. By default, this feature should be turned on in your settings since the patch, but just in case, check to make sure. So what does multi-threaded optimization do? It allows CPUs to use more thread, whereas previously it would only default to one. This will enable Fortnite to use more CPU load, increasing frame rate dramatically. This is effective on all PCs with i3 or Ryzen 5 or better. Now, if you notice a change for the worse, you can always go into options and turn it off. 
I do imagine though that this would be suitable for virtually everyone though. So make sure to check it out for optimal performance. And once again guys, this is Keith Allen Henson and stay tuned for more videos coming out.